What's up guys? Finally back with another episode of Road to the Top. Uh, it's been quite a while since I made a video, about three weeks. Um, it's the end of the year for school. Obviously, I just want to finish that up. Uh, finals for me are next week, and then I'll actually be heading out to Seattle Regionals on Friday. Going to be participating on Saturday, and hopefully Top Cut on Sunday, which would be very nice. Um, for now, I'm just going to keep using this team that I've been using these past few episodes, my Eveltol and Groudon team. Uh, I don't want to switch it up or anything just because I don't want to accidentally reveal what I might bring to Seattle or Utah. Um, so I'm just going to keep using the same team that I have been using over the past uh, few episodes, like I said. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's just go straight to the battle. Uh, nothing's changed on the team. Um, at this point, I'm pretty much fine with everything that I have. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but I am running Swagger on Thunderous instead of Taunt now. Uh, and it's a change that I really like. I think that it's, uh, it has a lot of good synergy with Eveltal's foul play, and I think that Swagger is more useful than Taunt in this metagame. Just because a majority of the Pokemon that usually run, um, or that are usually going to get taunted usually have Mental Herb, or usually have a Pokemon next to it that stops Taunt anyway, so... Um, yeah, it's, it, it's just, to me, it's not, it, it is worth running sometimes, obviously, but, um, yeah, it's, it's not good in every matchup. Uh, opponent's going to be having the, uh, Evolto and Kyogre restricted duo for this match, so gonna be a bit interesting. Um, obviously, uh, Kyogre has a positive matchup over Groudon, if it does get the weather up, and it looks like my opponent's actually really weak to... Uh, Groudon on this team. If I'm able to get Groudon under either speed control or some, or, um, yeah, speed control with either Thunder Wave or Trick Room, then that could put me in a really good position straight off the bat. Um, so let's see. What's he gonna lead? I almost definitely think he's going to lead the, uh, Gengar right here. Um, and I think Kangaskhan's also worth bringing to this match. Uh, I'm probably just going to lead Kangaskhan, Eveltal, I'll go Groudon in the back, and for my last Pokemon, I'm actually going to go Thunderous. Um, the reason I'm not leading Thunderous for this match is because I think that uh, being able to threaten the Gengar straight away with a Snarl or something can put me in a really good, really good position straight off the bat. Um, and also it uh, threatens a potential Thunderous or Kyogre lead just in case if I want to go for Snarls on those, or also just maybe if I want to double target on something. Uh, they actually lead the Kangaskhan and Evelta lead too, so uh, definitely going to be an interesting uh, situation right here for both of us. Um, I think I might just want to double into Evelta this first turn. I don't think that they're going to go for the fake out. They might, actually. So, I think if they do fake out, it's probably going to be onto my Eveltol, but I'm fine with that. Um, I'm just going to go for the fake out onto their Eveltol. Because I think that's more of a problem for this lead right here. And then I'm just going to go for a Foul Play into Kangaskhan. Um, foul Play just does a little bit more damage than Dark Pulse if he's a... Excuse me, if he's a uh, bulkier Kangaskhan. Uh, maybe with a little bit of special defense or something. So, let's see. Uh, my Kangaskhan is going to be Mega Evolving second, so that means we're speed tying. So hopefully he doesn't try to, um, hopefully he doesn't try to fake out my Kangaskhan. Okay, so I do win a potential fake out speed tie. Uh, so if he does go for fake out, obviously I do win that right there. Um, and let's see. I think we're just going to trade the fake outs this turn. Okay, that's fine by me. Then I think I might just double into Kangaskhan. I, I, no, not into Kangaskhan. I would... Most likely, I just want to attack into Eveltal. I know my Kangaskhan can survive a low kick 100% uh, of the time, as long as he's a Jolly variant. Um, I think I'm just going to double edge Eveltal right here. And then just go for a foul play into Kangaskhan. Actually, we're going to go for the plays. I'm going to protect Kang, and then go for a foul play. Yeah, sometimes I forget I have that protect option. A lot of people, they see fake out, uh, and they don't think about protect. Uh, and he goes for sucker punch. Is he... He goes for the double sucker punch. Okay. So that was a play I was thinking about um, that my opponent might go for, predicting me to double into one of his Pokemon, but 
Um, I didn't think he'd go for that. I honestly thought his best play right there would have been to... Uh, I think his best play would have just been to go for the low kick and a protect, maybe. Um, but that's obviously very fine with me right there. Because now I know that if he wants to go for Sucker Punch, he has to risk me going for another Protect or something. Um, and also, if I Sucker Punch his Kangaskhan, it's going to come down to Speed Tie, too. Uh, but I think I'm just going to Double Edge Eveltal and then Foul Play Kang. Because I'm honestly fine with... Tri if he does uh, Double Sucker Punch again and he does pick up the Knockout... Oh, and he goes for a Double Edge on Eveltal. Okay, and... He's definitely an adamant kings. Wait, no. How did he KO me right there? I should have been able to survive that, I think. Normally, <laughs> I should. Um, okay, hopefully he's not as bulky or something. Yeah, what the heck's up with that? He must have just gotten really high rolls on me because... Oh, and he goes for the Tailwind too, so that's really big. Um, so we do trade Pokemon this turn. However, uh, both of his Pokemon are in... KO range of pretty much anything. Um, yeah, and I think I have to bring Thunderous in right here. Okay, so I wasn't expecting Tailwind, and I also wasn't expecting his Evelto to, uh, to survive that turn. Uh, and like I said, my Evelto can normally survive a Fake Out plus a Double Edge from Kangaskhan, just because I do run some bulk, so... Uh, a little bit unfortunate right there. Um, I guess I sort of wish I went for Sucker Punch now, because I'd be in a really, really great position where my opponent really couldn't threaten me with anything. But now I think I can just go for a Protect. No, Protects... He's, I think he's going to predict me to protect. I'm just going to sucker punch his Kang and then um, Thunder Wave Veltal. Okay, and he just goes for double sucker punch. Okay. And he doesn't go with sucker punch with his Kang's gone, I think. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Okay. So I'm fine with that. Uh, Thunder Wave just means that my Kangaskhan Sucker Punch will go before his Eveltals. So he went for the single Sucker Punch, but not both. This match is going really weird. Because my opponent's Eveltal... Uh, I, uh, like I said, I am a uh, bulky Kangaskhan. All my Pokemon are pretty bulky, except Thunderous and Salamence. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, because Double Edge should have been able, uh, I, I don't know. He wasn't, he wasn't Adamant Kangaskhan, he was Jolly. I think he just got the damage rolls. Um, and now I think this is a position where I can just protect my Kangaskhan and Thunder Wave Kyogre. Um, he might just go for like a Water Spout and a single target attack. I'm really surprised that my opponent didn't play around me protecting last turn. Uh, maybe they just thought that Sucker Punch would pick up the knockout. Oh, and they're actually just going to let me get the Thunder Wave off too, so... Uh, hopefully we can see some hacks right here. Uh, that'd put me in a really great position. Um, Kyogre does go for Origin Pulse, and it does outspeed the Veltal since the Veltal is paralyzed. Uh, it's going to connect with my Thunderous, bring it down to its Sash. Hopefully, hopefully, um, I can get a full paralysis. As we do, yeah! <laughs> so good at this game. Um, and I actually think I'm just going to Sucker Punch the Veltal and go for a Swagger. On a Kyogre. Oh, okay, and he just he just stays in with both. So we're just going for the hacks for this play. The reason that I did not switch out Nagroudon, I, I probably should have switched out, but uh, the reason I didn't switch out Nagroudon is because I expect him to be going for an Ice Beam this turn, predicting the switch. Uh, and he probably has Gengar in the back with Skill Swap, I'd imagine. So the hacks right here just guarantees if he does uh, hit through both the Confusion and the Paralysis... Um, it would just guarantee me a lot of momentum, 
Uh, and if, if he did manage to hit through, then I'd at least have... Oh, wow, okay, so Groudon's actually a lot better than I thought. Um, I was going to say, because if he had roleplay, or I, I guess skill swap Gengar, but also roleplay Thunderous, um, then I'd still be in a bad position. Okay, and this is pretty good. Uh, so I think I can just double-edge the Thunderous. I don't know, because if, if I double-edge Thunderous and he's fast and goes for Thunderbolt, he knocks me out. He could also protect Thunderous, too. I think I'm going to protect Kang and then go for a Swagger into Thunderous. Uh, the reason I'm going for this play is because... Oh, and he, j he just goes for the Protect play, so... Okay. So, I sort of scout out the Protect with my Kangaskhan. Um, but, like I said, if he is faster, then he should be able to... Um, Thunderbolt my Kang. Alright, come on, hacks again? Nah, he hits through. Does he... And he connects. Okay, that's fine. Um, and now the hope is that he doesn't have role play. And regardless, I think I can just go for a Sucker Punch and a Rock Slide. A uh, Sucker Punch going into the Thunderous. Uh, rock Slide just to do damage to Thunderous and then also to flinch Kyogre. Uh, because at the very least, if he does have role play, I will break the Thunderous' Sash and hopefully hacks out the uh, Kyogre. So this sort of uh, this sort of shows why I said I was running Swagger. Um, it's just a lot more useful compared to Taunt in a lot of situations. Obviously, for this turn right here, if I wanted to predict his Thunderous, his Protect or something, I could just go for a Double Protect and then maybe Taunt the next turn. Um, just in case if he had role play, because obviously, um, if he did and I had Taunt, then that would guarantee, almost guarantee me the win at this point at least. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to go Sucker Punch onto the Thunderous, just in case if he goes for Thunderbolt. Uh, and then rock side in case he has role play or something. Okay, and he is just going for the attack with Thunderous, so... Um, yeah, he definitely looks like the Sash variant. Okay. Oh, and he has Wild Charge, so he's actually a physical variant. So, um, I assume he has Super Power on his uh, Thunderous, but um, it's not really going to do any damage to Groudon if he does decide to go for it. If maybe I miss Rock Slide or something right here. Uh, and Rock Slide's going to connect with both, so... Um, obviously, going to KO the Thunderous, deal some chip damage to Kyogre, and it should put it in range of Precipice Blades next turn. And now he's just going to have to deal with hacks from here. Uh, okay, yeah. And he, <laughs> the Paralysis, the Swagger, and the Rock Slide, pretty tough to get through for my opponent. Um, obviously, just so much hacks in my favor. Uh, yeah, and he's just going to forfeit. I was going to say, unless my opponent got maybe like one or two crits and maybe I missed Precipice Blades twice, they could have had a chance, maybe. But there was just so much hacks right there uh, going in my favor that uh, they really didn't have a choice. So another thing I want to point out for that match, uh, this is something I'm going to make a video about sometime, uh, probably after Seattle Regionals, but I just want to discuss why... Um, there's this huge stigma in the community, in my opinion, about moves like Thunder Wave and Swagger. Obviously, Hacks is very uncompetitive. Uh, it's very easy to argue that uh, immediately, um, immediately denying your opponents, uh, what is it? Immediately, only giving them a 55% chance. I, yeah, it's on the first turn. 55% uh, chance to be able to go for an attack is huge because if your opponent keeps hitting themselves or if they can't get an attack off, then you pretty much win. And what I was going to say is in a metagame like this one, I think that Swagger is really underrated. I think that more people should use it, even on uh, teams without like foul play. Um, I think that if Smeargle, or uh, sorry, not Smeargle, if Dark Void gets banned, I think that Swagger might be worth running over Taunt on a lot of teams. Um, just because if you can stop someone from attacking for a turn, that can easily, it, like, it just generates so much momentum for your side, um, and it can easily put you in a winning position. Uh, obviously, that's why people have used it in previous years, but I think for this year, uh, just because of how important it is to get off every single attack, um, I think it's, I, I just think it's really, really good this year. 
Uh, next opponent's going to be Luke, 1667 rating from the U.S. Um, going to be using a standard Ray Ogre team. It's actually, I, I believe it's similar to... Ooh, it's, it's one of the Jamies. It's one of the uh, UK players uh, named Jamie. Uh, they used a very similar team at um, the UK regionals and won. Uh, I believe it was a Togetic over Togekiss, though. But this is definitely a match where if I can get the Trick Room mode up with Groudon, then it's almost automatically a win. Um, and I'm just going to go for a very standard setup for this. Uh, Salamence Eveltal as a lead with Groudon and Cresselia in the back. The reasoning is that Salamence and Eveltal can easily check Scizor. Uh, the Intimidate makes it so Raichu can't one-hit KO Eveltal if they are running, like, Life Orb. Magnets uh, roll, I think, like a 1 in 3 to KO my set. Um, but after the Intimidate, obviously, it makes it lower. Um, and it also makes your opponent have to play the Mind Games turn 1, because if they switch in, like, Rayquaza... Oh, and they actually lead Gengar, too. I was going to say, if they um, switch in Rayquaza and you, like, protect and snarl, they almost lose. Uh, because Water Spout or Scald or Ice Beam really won't do too much damage to Eveltal. Uh, but they're going to lead very, very passively right here. I assume they're just going to go for a Fake Out onto Salamence and... Um, oh, what is it? Fake Out onto Salamence and then a... Or, sorry, not Fake Out onto Ments. Uh, fake Out into Eveltal. Uh, just because Snarl puts him in a really bad position. Uh, but there's really nothing I can do right here. Um, so I actually think it might just be worth switching out into Cresselia and Groudon. Yeah. I'm going to make that double switch. Because I assume he's just going to go for Fake Out and Icy Wind. And hopefully he's not Mega Gengar. If he's Mega Gengar, I'm in a really bad position straight off the bat. And especially if he has, like, Hidden Power Water Gengar. Um, but I assume this is just going to be the standard Sash Gengar. Then let's see. As long, Basically, as long as he doesn't go for a Taunt right here, I'm in a good position. Or at least a decent position. Good enough that it's not bad. Oh, and it's Mega Gengar. That's huge. Okay. So, they might be the Hidden Power Water set on Gengar. So this is really big. Um, fake out. Okay, onto the Eveltal slot. Hidden Power from Gengar. So he's Hidden Power Ice. Okay, this is really big for me. This is huge for me. Because this means he has Rayquaza and Kyogre in the back. Um, and he might not have Taunt on Gengar. Okay, so this is really, really big. Because now I can go for Trick Room and then Precipice Blades. And the only safe switch in he has is Rayquaza on his team, I think. He might have the... He, he wouldn't bring Togekiss. Uh, switches out Gengar. Going to be into Rayquaza, so that's fine. Um, I assume he's not like Hidden Power Water or Raichu or anything. Uh, he goes for Nuzzle, so just trying to get the Paralysis right here. Um, and I will be able to KO this Raichu with Precipice Blades. You know, now that I think about it, it probably would have been better not to connect right there. But at the very least, if I don't get the Trick Room off, I can just rotate my Groudon out if I want to. Okay, but we get the Trick Room out, so that's really good. Um, and I assume he's just bringing in Kyogre next turn. There's really no reason not to. Alright, and this is where it starts to become a 50-50. Because if your opponent predicts you to predict their Rayquaza to protect, um, it sounds really weird. But if they predict that, then obviously um, they can just go, excuse me, they could go for an attack onto your Cresselia and potentially knock you out. But I think what I'm going to do right here is just go for gravity and a protect. And if he does protect with Rayquaza, it's almost an instant win right here. Okay, and that's really good. Because now I can just go for an Ice Beam and a Precipice Blades. Um, and then even though he'll still have his Weather Up, I'll be able to KO the uh, Rayquaza. Yeah, okay, this is really good. Really, really, really good. Ish.
Um, this is actually a turn where I... I think I want to reverse Trick Room. Yeah, because I can just bring in the Veltal next turn, and that should be able to... Ooh, he's bulky Ray. He's also very fast Kyogre, too. I was going to say, because he'll just KO my Groudon right here, but I'm fine with that at this point. Um, because I'd rather have the Trick Room gone so Eveltal can just sweep from here. Uh, Ray's just going to Dragon Ascent. I'm assuming it's Focus Sash. Oh, no, he's Life Orb. That did a lot of damage if it's not Life Orb. Okay, he's, he is Life Orb. And then hopefully I can reset the Trick Room right here. If I can reset the Trick Room, I believe I win the game. And I do. Okay. Because now I can just go for a Snarl with Eveltal. And then I guess just an Ice Beam into Ray. Um, and he's going to have a very hard time dealing a lot of damage right here to uh, Eveltal. Just because Gengar's in the back. Maybe if he has... Um... Oh, and actually, you know, I can just Ice Beam Kyogre. Yeah, because Snarl definitely KOs the Rayquaza, as long as he's naive, I believe. Um, and then I believe a Snarl plus Ice Beam can KO Kyogre. So maybe if he protects Ray and goes for a water attack, like a Scald, then I, I might be able to pick up the Knockout. So Snarl comes out, hopefully picks up the Knockout on Ray, and it does. Okay. And it looks like Ice Beam's not going to pick up the Knockout on the uh, Kyogre right here, but... He goes for Scald into Evaltol. Okay, not doing much damage. No Freeze, it's really good. Or sorry, no Burn. Um, okay, an Ice Beam does good damage to the Kyogre. And I Freeze him. Okay. Doesn't really matter at this point because um, what I could do next turn is I'm just going to Sucker Punch the Gengar. Um, I was going to say, because I can just Sucker Punch Gengar for the Knockout, um, and then Kyogre would need to critical hit me to get the KO. And if it came down to it, since I have the Ice Beam damage on Kyogre, I could go for a Trick Room and a Protect with Ments, and then Ice Beam Kyogre and Double Edge Gengar for the win. Yeah. Okay, and he goes for Protect, so... Uh, I'm guaranteed to win right here, as long as he attacks with Gengar. Okay, yeah, and this will this should knock out. Yeah, okay. I was thinking um, because I've calced that out before. Uh, I believe as long as they're not like some really physically bulky set, then it picks up the knockout. And let's see. If I was playing a best of three, what moves have I gone for? I've gone for Snarl and Sucker Punch. Yeah, and they can just forfeit right here. Oh, they go for the double protect, uh, just to see if they can get it, but I'm uh, not going to matter at this point. Um, as long as they don't stall out my sucker punches with protects, and then I don't, like, miss something random. No, oh, and they, they don't get the protect. Uh, oh, and Cresselli gets paralyzed, so, okay. Um... I'm going to stop playing this like it's a best of three. I'm just going to go for the knockout. Oh my god, this person's seriously doing this. Uh, so this is another match where... Um, I guess this sort of shows how this team can beat Ray Ogre. A lot of people don't really know how... Um, People don't really know how this team can beat Ray Ogre consistently. Obviously, Veltol is really good against both Ray, Quaza, and Kyogre. Um, Snarl drops their special attack. Foul play can almost one-hit knockout Ray without any uh, boosting moves at all. Or, sorry, boosting items. Um, and they just go for protect again. Uh, but it just shows how, uh, for me, I can lead safely with Salamence and Veltol. Uh, it gives me a lot of options if they lead something like Raichu and the um, Raichu and the Kyogre. And then obviously uh, you could do a turn one double switch like I did with Cresselia and Groudon. Now, the match would have been a lot different had he been Focus Sash Gengar. Obviously he would have been able, uh, he probably would be running the Taunt variant 
um, of Gengar, which would mean that he would stop my Trick Room. But at the very least, I would be able to um, stop my, uh, stop something like my Salamence from getting Icy Winded, which is big. Um, and then being able to switch into something like a Volt Tackle for Groudon. Uh, it's just, there, that's the reason why I like this team. You can play conservatively when you need to. Not a lot of teams can get those sort of double switches and play conservatively, but for this team you can, which is what I like about it. Uh, and that's going to be the end of the episode, guys. Um, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please go and leave a like. helps me out a lot. Uh, and if you want to keep up with all my content, go and check out my social media and hit subscribe. Modern Gamer, thanks for watching. And the, rec the, the record button's not working. Three, two, one. All right.